This is the Roxy in uh, 1923 when it was the West Side Market, and uh, this is the building, and it still looks like this today, although it's black. Uh, and then this was in the 40s, and it was called the Largo, and it was a strip club, and uh, there were strippers. I was driving up on on to Sunset and I was making a right turn coming to work and I look over and there's this guy holding a sign that said uh, Tower Records going out of business sale 50% off and kind of put that put it right up on the car window like it was right there I'm kind of in in that moment I really didn't see Tower Records I, I saw the Roxy and I saw the strip kind of this is it it's over and I, I felt that if Tower Records could go, that we could easily just all together domino. The strip would become history. I think the Roxy was at a place where we had felt like we had done everything we could um, that we knew. Traditional marketing, um, bands, just we were kind of at a, at a crossroads with, with the Roxy and didn't know which direction it was going to go and was really uh, open. Um, surprisingly to to some help or some guidance and that's when I ended up meeting uh, Kira Reed. The obvious thing to do when I got here, the obvious thing to do was say okay well look at we're the Roxy Theatre, we've had 35 years of history, look at how great we were. But nobody gave a crap. <laughs> nobody wanted to hear about what we'd done. So we were faced with a club that for the last 10 years nobody really cared about and they didn't care about our history either. So it was a real challenge to determine how are we going to create this brand or revitalize this brand without it being on the coattails of what we've done before. So the first thing is concept of community. Being a part of the branding of a community means you have to do it authentically and transparently and organically. That was it. Build community. See where it takes us. Answer responses. Pay attention. Listen. The absolute fundamentals of social media were our branding strategy. So today we are at uh, the Roxy is the number one music venue on Twitter and Facebook. The Comedy Store is the number one comedy store on Twitter. And the Viper Room for a 200 cap room has 17,000 followers. Is that correct? 18,000. 18,000, which is phenomenal. Uh, for personalities, for individuals, for celebrities, having a million followers is relatively common. Having 100,000 followers is relatively common. But for venues, uh, having 10,000 is uh, puts you in the top percentage. So when we're talking about a, a venue being able to, to push uh, 50,000 followers, 150,000 followers, it is it's absolutely uh, we're, we're talking some some real strength here. Someone got a gin and tonic and they tweeted out, "I just got an overpriced gin and tonic uh, that was super weak." You know, Roxy sucks basically. And then. So I go and I find a picture and I run downstairs and I, I search them out in the club. I find someone with their head down in their Blackberry with an empty gin and tonic. And I went to the bar and I got an extra strong gin and tonic. And I, I said, is that a gin and tonic? And she looks up and she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, sorry, here's another one on the house. And she looked at me and I said, I saw your tweet. <laughs> we had like a super uncomfortable moment. <laughs> but that person then, you know, after it was done being freaked out, said, oh my God, the Roxy's really rad, like, thanks. Um, and social media, some people feel like it's instantly, it's about getting out and it's about this outward expression. And for us, it was really a mirror. And we were able to see what people thought about us and actually um, start absorbing that. And we found Twitter early and, and we built up about 10,000 people, which was pretty impressive uh, by itself. Uh, and then we saw the Viper Room come online and they had about a hundred people on. We had a conversation in the office. Do you think we should retweet them? And some people in the office were like, no, that's our competition. We do not need to help them in any way. But we, we, we ended up saying, you know what, we're going to give this a try and we're going to do it, you know, partly selfish. You know what, I was like, hey, we better do it before they do it. And we, we sent it out and we said, hey, everyone follow the Viper Room, want to welcome them to the Twitter or whatever. And a week later, the Viper Room wrote back, Thanks, Roxy. Awesome to be, you know, on here with you. Um, 
a week later after that, the Comedy Store, we both saw the Comedy Store come on. So you saw the Roxy and the, uh, and the Viper say, hey, everybody welcome the Comedy Store and follow them. And this kind of thing started to happen over and over. And that was really the start of the social strip of this community where, um, you know, co-opetition, it's, it's a word that's used a lot. It's not my favorite word. We created a, mar a marketing network through that. Uh, we created a uh, really strong online community through that, and then we needed to figure out how do we take this online community and actually, you know, ROI, whatever the words are, but, but turn it into something valuable besides this great talking piece, and how do we bring them offline, how do we get them there, and that's when Alf from the Comedy Store uh, came up with this crawl idea. You, you have this venue that has all this history and, and a, a set way of doing things. And, and you have sort of a new world that's moved in uh, to this old venue. And, and sometimes you gotta crack some skulls to, to show them that, that changing and, and, and moving forward and, uh, and being more open is the right direction to go into. So it's, it's, it's very difficult, but, but it's so rewarding. It's so rewarding when the changes actually come through. A high-tech scavenger hunt this weekend along the famed Sunset Strip. Businesses will launch a series of tweets to announce specials on food, drink, and show tickets. Landmarks on the Sunset Strip have decided to use technology to their advantage. Sunset Strip has four businesses that are very much into Twitter. And what we ended up doing was uh, we got together and decided how can we reward the tweets, and which, are, which is our Twitter community. And we decided maybe do a, a crawl with each of the businesses taking part doing food and drink specials. What I learned from this was that working together works a lot better than, uh, than, than being separate and, and, uh, and, and trying to make it on your own, especially when times are tough, especially when the scene is changing. 